This has simply never happened before. An unprecedented gap between data, impressions, maybe a whole lot more. The main payroll report is just wrong. There is no other option. The only real question is how wrong? To begin with, the unemployment rate just hit 4% as employment sank by more than 400,000 last month. While that rate sounds really low, it's actually a very bad sign. It's not the rate, but the direction and how far and how long it is moving in that direction. The unemployment rate is up six tenths of a percentage point in just over a year, which is a very clear sign of recession in the labor market and the economy. But worse than that, when you actually add back discouraged workers who stopped looking for work because they couldn't find any, the unemployment rate might rather be around 4.4%, meaning a full percentage point increase off last year's low. Even among those who haven't been laid off, there's been an enormous shift in the hours available to them. Full-time positions once again plunged in May, while part-time only partly offset them. But the headline payroll number was huge. It actually doesn't matter what it was because it was so far over everyone's head yet again. The thing is clearly wrong, and we have a vast, deep archive of economic data and relationships that thoroughly establish just how much the establishment survey is getting it wrong. Multiple mainstream sources are publicly questioning the data that's coming out of the CES or establishment survey. When even mainstream media economists are calling out the government and the BLS, you know something is up. Here's an example. Bloomberg Economics' Anna Wong wrote, May's jobs report presented contradictory views of the labor market as we expected, as everyone now expects. The establishment survey shows robust gains in non-farm payrolls, yet the unemployment rate rose to 4%. We believe the latter, the unemployment rate, currently offers a closer approximation of reality than payrolls, as the BLS model for estimating business births and deaths, which added 231,000 jobs to the non-farm payrolls print in May, is lagging the reality of surging establishment closures and falling business formation. We think the underlying pace of current job gains is likely less than 100,000 per month. And there is every reason to believe that the establishment survey is overstating job gains by a tremendous amount. As I said, it is clearly wrong. The only question is how wrong. And so we have to use the other data that we've been given, especially from the household survey, the unemployment rate, to try to piece together what the actual and accurate picture of employment has been. It's not 300,000 or whatever the number came to be. It's actually closer to the unemployment rate where unemployment is rising. It isn't rising rapidly, but the fact that it's rising at all is a bad sign. And to this degree over this length of time is a recession sign. According to the BLS figures from the current population survey, the CPS household survey, the unemployment rate, as we said, 4%. Now let's up six tenths of a percentage point from last April, but as we've seen in a second, it's actually probably closer to 4.4%, if not higher. This one is an unequivocal recession signal. If the, and if the unemployment rate is actually higher than 4%, then the recession signals get even deeper. The household survey measure of employment decreased, fell by 408,000 jobs, and it's been down since October, falling by about half a million jobs. So again, looking more like shallow recession than whatever it is the establishment survey suggests. The number of full-time jobs, which has been back and forth, but mostly, mostly and sharply lower since last fall, full-time jobs fell by another 625,000 in the month of May, reversing the gains over the previous two months, especially in March. Since September, full-time jobs are down by a million, another solid recession signal. Part-time jobs were up in the month of May by 286,000, and since, since September, they've been up by 803,000. So you can see what, what companies are doing here. As business has softened, as the economic climate looks nothing like the establishment survey and starts to become more questionable, they are converting full-time workers to part-time workers. They're cutting back on hours. So even those people who aren't laid off, they're seeing the number of hours they're working fall, decline, getting cut back from them because the economic environment is actually weak.
So full-time employment goes down by a substantial amount and only some people get some part-time work, leaving the overall number of unemployed to actually go up. According to the, to the uh, BLS, the number of those who were officially unemployed rose by 157,000 in the month of May, and since September, that has increased by 302,000. Now, the labor force declined by 250,000 in May and is down a little bit since September, which suggests, again, the participation problem. And so to put some back-of-the-envelope calculations, some rough numbers on what the unemployment would be if we actually factor in the participation problem, the participation problem is workers realize there aren't jobs available in the economy, so they stop looking for jobs altogether. And as they stop looking for jobs all, for altogether, the BLS says, well, you're no longer even a part of the labor force, so we don't even count you for the unemployment rate. We only use the official labor force. When in fact... If you stop looking for a job because there are no jobs available, you may not be a part of the official labor force, but you would be if there was a job. So we shouldn't discount those people. We should, we should include them in the unemployment rate, but nobody actually does. And this is a problem that's been going, going on since October of 2008. The participation problem, lack of jobs, and people giving up unemployment altogether. So if we use the same participation rate, the labor force participation rate, as in the middle of last year at the peak of the cycle, what, what appears to be the peak of the cycle, that was about 62.8%. And that would mean that the amount of official, the number of official unemployed would have risen by about 728,000 more. So you put 728,000 more into the official, the number of official unemployed, plus the labor force would be that much higher and you get an unemployment rate around 4.4%, not 4.0%. So with factoring the participation problem, you get 4.4%. Forgetting about the participation problem, just looking at the raw numbers, you get 4%. And either one of those solidly recession signal. So even though the unemployment rate is up, so is the establishment survey. The establishment survey blew away every single estimate that there was. It rose by 272,000, but again, it doesn't actually matter anymore. The numbers are just huge, and it is becoming more clear that they're just, they're just way out of line with the actual economic fundamentals and the underlying situation. Private payrolls increased by 229,000. And it's not just the birth death adjustment, though that is highly suspect. There's also trend cycle assumptions, as well as the smoothing techniques that the BLS applies to make sure the establishment survey goes in as straight a line as absolutely positive. When during economic inflections, which is what we're really getting into, smooth and straight isn't necessarily appropriate. In fact, it can't be appropriate because none of these things actually work out. But it isn't, it, it isn't necessarily unusual to see the uh, establishment survey rise on a year-over-year -year basis at the same time the unemployment rate is rising. When you look at the history of the establishment survey, as well as the household survey and the unemployment rate, at least the modern unemployment rate, that goes back to 1948, the unemployment rate does, and the establishment survey goes back to 1939. But anyway, we have 905 months where we can compare the unemployment rate and the rate of change in the payroll number. And what you see over those 905 months, there are 130 of them where the establishment survey is up on a year-over-year -year basis, but also the unemployment rate is up on a year-over-year -year basis too. And 11 of those 130 happen to be in 2023 and 2024, including the last 10 straight going back to last August. But in the vast majority of those months, it's because the economy is either heading into recession or is in the first stage of one. For example, the last time we had the unemployment rate up on a year-over-year -year basis at the same time the establishment survey was rising, that was March of 2020. So no surprise there, the pandemic. There were zero times this had been the case during the 2010s because we wouldn't expect the number of payrolls to continue to rise at the same time the unemployment rate would. And you can see on the scatter plot chart how there does seem to be a solid relationship. It's not perfect. It's not a 100% correlation. But in general terms, when the unemployment rate is rising, that means unemployment is rising, which we wouldn't expect a positive number in payrolls, at least not over the longer run. But there are these instances, there are these periods when usually transitioning from 
just before recession into the first stage of recession, where the, un where the unemployment rate is rising on a yearly basis and the establishment survey is up on a year over year basis too, like we're seeing today. There were the eight months between September 2007 and April 2008. The establishment survey was higher on an annual basis as the unemployment rate was rising. We also saw it in six months between January and June of 2001, again, entering the dot-com recession. There were the 12 months between November 1989 to December 1990. The establishment survey was higher on a year-over-year -year basis during that period, and the unemployment rate was rising. So you get the point here. An economy transitioning into a recession tends to produce higher unemployment. At the same time, it takes a little while for the establishment survey to turn around on an annual basis. So it isn't unusual to see these two things happening together. But what is unusual and what is unprecedented is the degree and the length of time in which these two series have diverged. I'm not just talking about the unemployment rate from the household survey, I'm also actually talking about employment as well. Because when you go back in time and look through those cases in, around recessions, 2008, for example, what you see is that in 2008, the household survey started to weaken around February 2007, but there wasn't a massive divergence. Even the, both of them peaked around November of 2007. The establishment survey was a little, a little later in January 2008. But even in the early part of 2008, while the household survey figure of employment was weaker than the establishment survey, it wasn't as tremendously weaker as we're seeing right now. They were relatively close together. In fact, they were moving in the same direction. Go back to any of the prior uh, business cycle peaks and moving into recessions and contractions in the labor market, you see the same thing. In 2000, they're relatively close together. In fact, in 2000, there was weakness in the household survey in the late 90s, but by 2000, the two series had basically converged again. Some of that was a, a discontinuity of the data, but either way, there wasn't a massive gap between the two series heading into the dot-com recession. You see the same thing again in the 1980s. 1980s, late 80s, heading into the SNL recession of 1990, the two series basically matched each other. It is highly unusual and if not unprecedented, the divergence between these two series. It's, it's highly unusual in the respect that we do see periods where the establishment survey is rising on a year over basis at the same time the unemployment rate is rising. While that has happened in the past, where it becomes unprecedented is that the establishment survey, even if it's moving higher on an annual basis, at least is starting to roll over into recession, which is being pictured and being illustrated by the rising unemployment rate. We don't see that in this case. And all the numbers are just absolutely astronomically large. And by that, I mean the gaps between the two series. That's what's really unprecedented here. Going back to October, that's really when everything began. You see this inflection all over the economy, except for the establishment survey. Payrolls are up about almost 2 million, about 1.8 million since October. At the same time, the household survey measure of employment is down by almost half a million. That's a huge difference. And of course, full-time jobs are off at the same time too. So they're picturing two different economies. Normally, when you have these discrepancies in statistics like this, they're just differences of degree. Here we're seeing something that looks more along the lines of a categorical difference, which is why many mainstream economists are having trouble, and it's also what makes this unprecedented. It's an either-or situation. Whereas before, we're like, okay, the establishment survey is a little bit weak, but the household surveys may be a little bit weaker, but both are becoming weaker at the same time and moving into recession. We can see that happening. Here you have the establishment survey that looks nothing like one, and the household survey that looks more and more like one. It is an unprecedented difference. And of course, we've seen this coming all the way, not just the what we've been hearing in the real economic data, as well as from companies around the, around the economy. We also have that strong correlation, a strong warning from the credit markets. I've mentioned this before, the senior, senior loan officer opinion survey. As soon as loan officers begin to tighten their lending standards, it leads to a hit in commercial and industrial lending, which means that companies are restrained in their credit. At the same time, there might be less demand for commercial and industrial lending, CNI loans. At the same time companies are doing that, they're also not going to be hiring tons of workers, and they might they're more likely to be cutting back on hours as well as laying off workers. There's a tight correlation between commercial and industrial loans and the unemployment rate 
with a lag of 18 months from when lending standards started to tighten. So there's another solid correlation that's panning out, one that was forewarned months ago, last year. I think Bloomberg's Anna Wong put it best when she wrote, the reality of surging establishment closures and falling business formation, and cited that for a reason to question what we're seeing from the establishment survey, because it does not align with anything. We've got other data from things like jolts also coming from the BLS, obviously the household survey, which has gone in a completely different direction, but corporate reports, how are companies hiring so many workers when they keep telling us their customers have no money? And yes, that's just retail, but it's not just retail. We see corporate reports from around the economy, around the general economy, which says they don't see a robust economic environment. In fact, they're more concerned than not. And as they're becoming more concerned, it would make more sense that they're cutting back on workers and cutting back on hours, not robustly hiring them month after month after month, way above every single expectation of every rational human that actually looks at the economy. When even mainstream sources are now calling out the government numbers, it's time to start thinking about what must be wrong with them because they are wrong. And as I said at the beginning, the only question here is just how wrong. The fact that the unemployment rate has risen as much as it has, that tells you the economy isn't performing well. And historical data backs up that contention. The establishment survey is doing something we've never seen before, unprecedented. It's breaking with basically everything else. History shows us that when the unemployment rate is rising, that means recession contraction. Even if the establishment survey is rising for a short period of time, that's gonna eventually turn around too. So what we have here is an unprecedented gap between what the establishment survey is doing and everything else, including common sense. The big problem is the only number that anyone hears about is the wrong one. And that wrong number is itself wrong. Robust hiring? So many companies continue to report that their customers are struggling. We talked about a couple of those in the video link below. As always, I thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you, Eurodollar University members and Eurodollar University subscribers. And until next time, take care.